Brother Mike, you have a question. I do. I have to remember where it is now. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay, I was in a BSF class, and we were reading Mark 3, I think it's 22, and they were referencing how that Jesus was the devil that was possessed by the devil, and then they kind of, it kind of fell into the blasphemy never associated that with being a satanic spirit and I got very confused by that. Let's go I don't to think I asked that very well but I know where it's in 3 Mark 3 25 26 28 Mark 3 what? Mark 3 22 It's got the Jesus Okay. How do you interpret the Bible? You remember? Cindy, you remember that? Who, what, who, what, where, when, and why, but, you know, you get it down really, that's, you interpret anything that way. History, math, mathematics, probably. <laughs> but, uh, who's speaking? Who's he speaking to, and what's the subject? That's real simple. Okay. Who, what, where, when, and why. So let's go here and let's go back. Go back up to verse 20. And we're taking a little parenthesis here, a parenthetical trip. And then we're going to go right back to the book of Exodus. And he came. Uh, I can't. <laughs> what is the next word? I've written this thing up so much. Home. Home. Okay, he came home and the multitude gathered again to such an extent that he could not even eat a meal. And when his own people heard of this, they went out uh, to take custody of him, for they were saying he has lost his senses. In other words, he's teaching himself to death. All right? And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, who's saying? Who's speaking? The scribes. scribes. They are the representatives of who? The Sanhedrin court. All right? Who was their... God was supposed to be their God. Okay? But they had completely divorced themselves from their Messiah. Had they not? They knew who he was. They had rejected, rejected, and rejected, and rejected him. Okay? Then it says, Jesus is possessed by Beelzebul, and he casts out demons by the ruler of demons. And he called them to himself and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? Okay. Now, is this what you're asking, Brother yeah, Mike? Okay. How can Satan cast out Satan? First of all, Satan doesn't cast out Satan. All right. He, we have demon casting meetings and all kinds of stuff out there, but they're really not casting out demons. All right. Now, Sometimes demonic things happen. Let's go on down a little bit further. And if a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, how can he stand? But he is finished. Number 27. But no one can enter into the strong man's house and plunder his property unless first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. All he's saying is what Jesus is doing. Jesus entered the strong man's territory. He's going to bind him. He's going to have uh, power over death, hell, and the grave. Okay? And truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men whatsoever blasphemies they utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. All right? This is what you call the unforgivable or the eternal sin. Who committed that sin? Who did it? Huh? Who, who did it, Cindy? Well, Judas did also, but who did it? Who did? Who is it talking? Who is the problem here? Huh? The Israel, Israel committed the unpardonable sin. Israel committed the unpardonable sin, and therefore they were destroyed. The Holy Spirit was working with Jesus. The Holy Spirit was working with Jesus and doing all the miracles, wasn't he? 
In the Spirit of God, we have Jesus baptized. We have the Father speak from heaven. We have a theophany. We have the Spirit come down looking like a dove landing on Jesus. We have the Son right there. We have the triune God all here. Jesus is proving that he is the Messiah. He's born in the right place. He's born in the right family. Everything's taking place. He heals the blind. He does everything that they do. But what does Israel do? They keep on rejecting, and not only do they reject, they say that the things that he did, he did by the power of Satan. So who, who committed the unpardonable sin? Israel. So the unpardonable and, sin is realizing the truth, the truth coming to seek you, or you knowing that it's existent, and then you can And rejecting it. it. And just keep on rejecting it. Yeah, that's what I hope. Yeah, the unpardonable sin. Israel committed this unpardonable sin. When a person continues to reject God today, he can commit the unpardonable sin because he's not going to be pardoned once he leaves this world. It's over with. And Israel was committing this sin because he was doing all these miracles by the power of the Spirit of God, and they were kept on rejecting him. And they kept on rejecting all the miracles. To realize this is the truth. Yes. You have to know. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That answer your question? Very much. All right. Thank you very much for the question. Cindy, do you have a question? She already knows all the answers all anyway. How about you? Uh, <laughs> what did you say, Cindy? I have all kinds of questions. Oh. Well, throw one at me every now and then. If I'll answer it, I can. Uh, I got one. Well, if it's the unpardonable sin, okay, Israel then was destroyed, dispersed, but it was never, it not, was not permanently destroyed. Because we have Israel yes. again today. As the bride of God, they are done. They are finished. They will never As be the bride. The bride. The they will never be the bride. bride. They will never be the close relationship with him that they could have been. It's over. But she was replaced. Yes. She was she was replaced, but we're not talking about replacement theology. Because there is an economy for Israel yet in the end time. Because they're supposed to be. For one thousand oh, years. Okay. For one thousand years Israel's gonna do on this earth what they should have done back then and they'll praise him for 1,000 years they'll have 1,000 year feasts of booths and all that kind of stuff alright are you ready you ready to go to the book of Exodus Exodus means what the road out and what is the name of the book of Exodus in Hebrew it's different we ele shemot what does that mean and these names alright the names of the sons of Israel alright Two and five. Two and five. What to read? Bot. Perao. Likos. Al. Hayar. We na aratiha. Halikot. Al yad. Hayar. Watere. Et. Hatiba. Bitok. Hasuf. Watishla and she went and kept on going the bot of Pharaoh, the daughter of Pharaoh, daughter of Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Now, you know that in history we do have a name for this. In one historical, of course, we most people don't really believe this. What was that famous? Uh, Pharaoh's daughter. What was her name? Uh, Hat, uh, Hatefshit. Uh, Hatefshit. Is that what was her name? Ha, Hatshifit. Okay. They say, some of them say that this was the girl that, that did this. That, we, that's just kind of shooting in the dark because they don't really think so, but some people even say that. But in the book of Jasher, it gives her a name, and uh, in a lot of biblical writings, Josephus, she has a name. One of the most common names of her is Bathia. Bathia. All right, Bathia. Bathia means daughter of God. Bathia means daughter of God. Why would she be daughter of God? Why would she be known as daughter? Because she saved what? Because she saved Moses? Uh, Cindy. Pharaoh's 
Pharaoh was considered as God. And her name was Daughter of God. Okay, Daughter of God. All right. Uh, they, they have other places there. Uh, <clears throat> we could go and read from the book of Jasher. We could do that. I think I've got it with me. Just a little bit. And let you see. See what it says. Sixty eight and verse seventeen is where it is. I'm going to read this to you. I talked to you a little bit about it last week. This is what we call an extra biblical revelation here. In other words, it's outside of the holy canon of scriptures or whatever. The book of Jasher is simply a history book. That's all it is. It's not inspired history. It's a history book. It's a history book that goes way back to this time period of time. That's all. Just a history book. And uh, it tells also all of all of uh, Moses' names here. We, we looked at that the other day. And the woman hastened and, and to take away her son before the officers came, and she took him for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. And his sister Miriam stood off to know what would be done with him and what would become of her words. And God sent forth at that time a terrible heat in the land of Egypt, which burned up the flesh of man like the sun in its circuit, and it greatly oppressed the Egyptians. And all the Egyptians went down to bathe in the river on account of the consuming heat which burned up their flesh, and it can get hot in Egypt. How many, Cindy, you've ever been to Egypt? You've been there. It's a hot place, isn't it? Arabia, pretty hot place over there. And Bathia, the daughter of Pharaoh, went also to bathe in the river owing to the consuming heat, and her maidens walked at the riverside, and all the women of Egypt as well. And Bathia lifted up her eyes to the river, and she saw the ark upon the water, and sent her maid to fetch it. And she opened and, and saw the child, and behold, the babe was uh, weeping. And she had compassion on him, and she said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Now, who do you think caused her to have compassion on this child? The Holy Spirit. And all the, the women of Egypt walking on the riverside desired to give him suck. Now, these are all the lactating women. I told you about this last week but he would not suck for this saying was from the Lord in order to restore him to his mother's breast and Miriam his sister was at the time amongst the Egyptian women on the riverside and she saw the thing and she said to Pharaoh's daughter shall I go fetch a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you and Pharaoh's daughter said go and the young woman went and called the child's mother and Pharaoh's daughter said to Jochebed Take this child away and suckle him, suckle it for me, and I will pay your wages, two bits of silver daily. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Now we know, how many of you saw uh, uh, Cecil B. the Mill's big picture, you know? And he didn't know who his mother was and all this kind of stuff, but he did. He was raised among these people. And at the end of two years, the child grew up and she brought him to the daughter of Pharaoh. For the first two years he was with his mom and daddy and his brothers and sisters. And she called his name Moses for she said because I drew him out of the water. And what else does Moses mean? It means to rescue or to draw out. And Amram his father called his name Chabar for he said it was for him that he associated with his wife again whom he had turned away. Remember? He and his wife put living together because they didn't want to have any more children because the children were going to be exposed. And Jochebed, his mother, called his name Jacuthiel because she said, I have a hope for him to the Almighty, and God restored him to me. All right? And Miriam, his sister, called him Jared for she, for she descended after him to the river to know what his end would be. And Aaron, his brother, called his name Abi Zanuk, saying, My father left my mother and returned to her on his account. 
And Jehath, the father of Amram, that's his grandfather, called his name Abigdor, because on his account did God repair the breach of the house of Jacob and uh, could no longer throw their male children into the water. And the nurse called him Abi Soka, saying, In his tabernacle was hidden for three months on account of the children. And Israel, all of Israel, called his name Shemaiah, son of Nathiel. For they said, In his days God has heard their cries and rescued him from their oppressors. Now, how old was Moses' mother? Remember? How old was Jochebed when she married and who was Jochebed with, with Amram? Who was Jochebed? Huh? There was a man in the land of Egypt. His aunt. That's his aunt, and she's a whole lot older than him. Amram marries his aunt, and she's as old as his grandma. Okay? She's old. There was a man in the land of Egypt, the seed of Levi, whose name was Ramram, the son of Kehath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And this man went and took a wife, namely Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, his father's sister. And she was 126 years old, and he came unto her. All right? So this gives you a little bit of extra history. There was another miraculous birth. Actually, three miraculous births. And she went and kept on going, the daughter of Pharaoh, to bathe unto the river. And her maidens, walking upon the side of the river, and she saw the basket in the middle of the reeds, and she sent et ama amata watika shika. And uh, her female slave girl, and she took it. All right, she took it. Literally, she took her, which is the basket. Now on the next page, we got a, a word over there where I left it out because I did that by mistake, not on purpose. Wati fata. Wati vehu. Et Hayaled Wihane Naar Bake Wata Mol Allah Watomar Me Yalde Ha Ibrim Ze. And she opened up and kept on opening it up, and she kept on seeing him, the birthed one. That's literally what it means, the birth one. And behold, a boy, a boy, a youth, not er, a youth, weeping. And she uh, rescues him. That's what it says here, wata mo. And she rescues him, has compassion on him, and she keeps on saying, from the children of the Hebrews is this one. From the children of the Hebrews is this one. From the children of the Hebrews. Watamar, Achota, El, Bat, Pero, Ha, Elik, Wakarti, Wakarati, I should have said. Lock, Isha, Menikit, Men, Ha, Ivriot, Watanik, Lok, Et, Hayelet. And she kept on saying his sister unto the daughter of Pharaoh. She didn't just say it once now. She's pestering her. All these women are running out there and they're trying to get him to suck. And then she goes out there and she sees all of this and, and she sees this has got to be from God. Now we see that from the other book, don't we? All right. So she goes up in and she said, Hey, uh, Bathia, hey, Bathia, hey, Bathia, hey, Uranus, whatever you want to call her, you know. 
hey, I, I, will you want me to do something for you? And all the time he keeps refusing these women. Shall I go and shall I call for you a woman? Ish shah. Say that, ish shah. What does woman mean? Out of man. Okay. A nursing one from uh, Hebrew women. Hebrew women. We know that's, uh, that's a feminine, so it's Hebrew women, not Hebrew men, but Hebrew women. Okay? What does Hebrew mean? You remember what Hebrew means? Brother Mike, you remember that one? You know what we got? We got to get your husband, so we'll have him. Mike and Sharon and Sharon and Mike, all right? Uh, you remember what Hebrew means? Dakota, what Hebrew means? Brother Abe, you remember what Hebrew means? What does it mean? From beyond the river. From the other side of the river. Remember that now? Cindy, you caught it, didn't you? I just jar your memory every now and then. All right. From beyond the river. And that she may nurse, that she may keep on nursing for you, the child. She may keep on nursing for you, the child. Two and verse eight. What tomorrow? La, bot, payroll, payroll, leaky, watelek, hal, hal, alma, watikra, et, m, hayelet. And she said to her, the daughter of Pharaoh, go. And she went. Now there's a whole lot more to this ha alma. Hal alma. What does ha alma mean? An alma. What's a bethula mean? Bethula. What's bethula? There's two words for virgin. Bethula and alma. What do those words mean? Gesenius is the best on these words of any of the Hebrew lexicographers, of all of them. All right. Bethula means a virgin that has been guarded and kept in the house. Alma means a sexually mature young woman. Of course, that could have been 10, 11, 12 years old. Okay. So she was somewhere around, she had reached puberty. Let's put it that way. All right. That's what it says, that she had reached puberty at least. She was sexually mature. It doesn't mean that she was a virgin. All right? The maid, the young woman, the uh, mature young, mar a woman of marriageable age, 10 years old, you know, <laughs> 12 or whatever back in those days. And she uh, kept on calling the mother of the birth of the woman. 2 and verse 9 now. What tomorrow? La, bot, payroll, hiliki, et, hayeled, haze, we had nikhu, nikhu, li, waani, etan, et, si karik, watika, ha isha, ha yeled, Watikhu. And she kept on saying to the daughter of Pharaoh, You lead away child, the this, and nurse him for me. Nurse him for me, and I shall give you wages. Now, over there in the book of Jasher, we found out how much she was giving him, didn't we? Got a little bit more of the story. Wages. You talked about wages this morning, Brother Abe. Remember wages. What was that wages? A reward. A reward. Wages or reward. I'll give you a reward. Now just look at this for just a little while. This is quite a story. Talk about Dakota. You talked about making fun and making jokes in the Bible. This is a great big joke right here. This is a joke on Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh said that I'm going to have all of these Hebrew boys killed. 
But this Hebrew boy, which is going to be the deliverer of, it, it, of Israel, he didn't get him killed. Not only did he not get him killed, but now he's going to raise him and he's going to pay his mama to take care of him. That's a joke. That's a real, real good joke. God plays jokes on people. All right? I will pay your wages. And she took the woman, the child, and she kept on nursing him. And she kept on nursing him. That's third person feminine singular. Hit the hell, wow, consecutive and perfect. She kept on nursing him for herself. Two and verse ten. And what was how many names did he have? Gobs of them, didn't he? Something, every name meant something, didn't it? What did Jared mean? That means to descend. Because she was descending and following him down the river. All right? Chabar. All right? Because he was joined back to him again, to his wife again. All right, 2 and verse 10, that's just some of them. Do you want me to go back over those names or not? No, I just, no. you got them? Right. I think I told them to you last week or something, yeah. didn't I? Yeah. All right. Wayigdol, Hayaled, Watavi Ehu, Livot, Payroll, Wahi, La, Levan, Watikra, Shimo, Moshe, Watamar, Ki, Men, Hamayim, Mishitihu. And he grew up great. And he grew up great, the child. He grew up great. Gadol. That word Gadol. See down there? That word Gadol. Gadol is the root of it. Most Hebrew letters or Hebrew names or words have three letter roots in them. And this one is Gadol. Why ye Gadol? Third person master senior, Cal Wow, consecutive and perfect. In Brown, Driver, and Briggs, it's on page 152 and page 178 in Kohler and Bumgardner. And if I have another lexicon that I refer to, I will write it down there and I'll put a parenthesis by it. But when you see one le uh, set of numbers and another one beside it, that's, that's Brown, Driver, and Briggs and Kohler and Bumgardner. I might put Gesenius down there or Davidson or something otherwise. The child, uh, the birthed one. And she brought him, she kept on bringing him to the daughter of Pharaoh. And he became to her a son. And she called his name Moshe, Moses, to draw out to her to rescue. For she said, she kept on saying, because from the waters, from the Hamayim, from the waters, I, a female, have found him. I, a female, have found him. First person construct singular, cow perfect, suffix third person masculine singular. That's all in that word to find. And the root of it is Moshe, Moshe to find or to draw out Moshe see that word Moshe there that is the word there for I found him and I drew him out first person construct, sing construct singular cal perfect suffix third person masculine singular 602 and 642 and Moshe that is the root of the name Moses alright 2 and verse 11 we jump way ahead in time we jump way ahead in time. We find that Moses here, according to the book of Jasher, has become a great warrior. He has become a great speaker, or not speaker, but judge, because he, he, he is, is a very intelligent man, even though Moses has a hard time talking. But when he says something, it's very important. What happened to Moses? Why he couldn't talk, according to the book of Jasher? What happened to him? Why couldn't he speak? Remember? Why couldn't he speak? When he was a little boy, he grabbed Pharaoh's crown off his head. And there was a whole bunch of uh, soothsayers and everything around there, and he said, what should I do with this child? Should I kill him right now? What should I do with this child? And they said, well, put out a, an ebony stone out there and put out a coal of hot fire. A coal of fire out there. And if he picks up the ebony stone and puts it in his mouth, kill him. 
if he picks up the fire, the coal of fire, like a brick hat in his mouth and puts it in his mouth, let him live. And so it says the Lord caused him to pick up the coal of fire and put it in his mouth, and it burned his lips and his tongue, and he could not speak very well after that. His tongue was very scarred. All right, now that's Jasher, the book of Jasher. Now we jump ahead. He was spared back at that time. We find out that he has trouble speaking later on, but God could have healed his mouth, couldn't he? If he, if he, if he had just spoke up, but he didn't do it. Why he? 2 and 11, Exodus 2 and 11. Bayamin. Hahem. Wayigdal. Moshe. Wayitzi. Elacha. Wayar. B. Siv Lotam. Wayar. Ish. Mitzri. Make. Ish. Ivri. Michal. And he became, or it became in the days, the, they, the those, that he had grown up great, big, Moses. And he went out unto his brothers. Now he knew who they were, didn't he? Forget the movie, the Exodus and all that stuff with Cecil B. Mill. He knew his family. He knew them by name. By the way, another thing that we discover from history and archaeology According to the book of Jasher and according to rabbinical history, the tribe of Levi were never slaves in Egypt, were they? What were they? What were they? Goldsmith and silversmiths. If they were doing anything over there, they were making these beautiful Pharaoh things. Okay? They were not out there in hard labor. Okay? And uh, when he had grown great and big and strong and powerful, and he went out unto his brothers, unto his Achal. These are his family members. In other words, the sons of Israel. And he saw in the burdens of them, and he saw a man, an Egyptian, smiting a man Hebrew from his brothers. Now, the book of Jasher, we have to go back and look at that too because this is very interesting. The 71st chapter of Jasher. Do you like this or not? Is this boring you to death or not? I love it. Okay. All right. Let's just go read between the lines here a little bit. Let me go read back to you too. Let's go back where I told you about Moses' mouth, okay? In uh, 70 and... Uh, And an angel that seemed like one of the wise, wise men or uh, counselors of Pharaoh uh, first of all it says here all this stuff I'm going to go back all the way to the 70 Moses grabs Pharaoh's crown okay uh, 70 in verse 1 right before that it continues to say this over and over and the men of Egypt did, did so to all the children of Israel day by day all the days of the long period. But the tribe of Levi did not at that time work with the Israelites with their burden from the beginning. But the children of Levi knew that the cunning Egyptians, and they exercised at first toward the Israelites. Then it says on the third year from the birth of Moses, when he was three years old, Pharaoh was sitting in a banquet, and Alpanath, the queen, was sitting at his right, and Bathia at his left. And the lad Moses was lying upon her bosom. And Balaam the son of Beor. Now this is the same Balaam later on. This guy's a rat and he's lived a long time. With his two sons. Who are the two boys of Balaam's name? New Testament gives you the name of 2 Timothy. What were the boys' names? Who were the two rats that uh, contested with Moses later on? Janus and Jambres. Okay. And the son of Beor and his two sons and all the princes of the king were sitting at the table of the king's presence. And the lad stretched forth his hand upon the king's head and took the crown from the king's head and placed it on his own head. And that's this is the one story I told you now. And when the king and the princes saw the work which the boys had done, the king and princes were terrified. And one to his neighbor expressed astonishment. Can you see this banquet now and all of what's going on? And the king said unto the princes who were before him at the table, What speak you, and what do you say, O princes, in this matter? What should be done? 
in this judgment against the boy on this act. And Balaam, now look at it. And Balaam, the son of Beor, the magician, answered before the king and prince, and he said, Remember now, O Lord uh, and king, the dream which uh, you did dream many days since, that the, which servant uh, interpreted unto thee. Now, therefore, this the child is from the Hebrew children, in whom is the Spirit of God, and let not my lord the king imagine that this youngster did this without knowledge. And he is a Hebrew boy, and wisdom and understanding are with him. And although he is yet a child, with wisdom he has done this and chosen unto himself the kingdom of Israel, of Egypt. He's going to take it away from you. For in this manner shall all the Hebrews deceive the kings and their nobles and do all these things cunningly in order that they may make the kings of the earth their men tremble. And surely didn't you know Abraham their father acted like this? And he deceived the army of Nimrod, the king of Babel, and Abimelech, the king of Gerar. And he possessed himself of the land of the children of Heth, all the kings of Canaan. And he descended into Egypt and said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And his son Isaac did so when he went to Gerar, dwelt there in the strength, and prevailed over the army of Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. And he also thought, making the kingdom of the Philistines stumble, and saying that Rebekah his wife was his sister. And Jacob, who dwelt treacherously with his brother, took from his hand and his birthright and his blessing. And he went to Padaram in the house of Laban, his mother's brother, and cunningly obtained from him his daughter and his cattle and belong, everything belonging to him, fled away and returned to the land of Canaan. And his son sold their brother Joseph and went down in Egypt and became a slave and was placed in prison uh, house for twelve years until the former Pharaoh dreamed dreams and withdrew him from this prison house and magnified him above all the princes of Egypt on account of his interpreting of his dreams to him and God caused the famine throughout the land and he sent for and brought his father and all his brothers and all the whole house of his father's household and supported them without price or reward and brought the Egyptians for slaves now therefore my lord king behold this child is risen up in your stead in Egypt do according to the deeds and to the trifle with which every king and prince judge if it please the king, let us now spill his blood upon the ground, lest he grow up and take away the government from your hand, and the hope of Egypt perish after he shall have reigned. And Balaam said to the king, Let us moreover call for the judges of Egypt and the wise men, therefore let us know if the judgment of death is due this boy as thou dost say, and then we will slay him. And Pharaoh sent and called for all the wise men of Egypt, and there came before the king an angel of the Lord, Jesus. Came among them, and he was like one of the wise men of Egypt. Is this enjoyable to you or not? Is this baloney or what? Okay. And the king said to the wise men, Surely you have heard of what this Hebrew boy and who is the house he has done, and thus the Balaam judged in this matter. Now judge you also and, and see what is due for the boy in this act that he has committed. And the angel, who seemed like one of the wise men of Pharaoh, answered and said, if he, follows, if he follows before all the wise men of Egypt and before the king and princes, if it please the king, let the king send for a man who shall bring before him an onyx stone and a coal of fire. And place them before the child, and the child shall stretch forth his hand and take the onyx stone. Then shall we know that with wisdom this child has done all that he has done, and we must slay him. If a child looks at a stone and, and looks at that onyx stone, then he can understand that's not hot, this is hot. But if he stretch forth his hand upon the coal of fire, then he shall know that he is not doing this with knowledge, for he is still just a child. And he shall live. At the same thing, the thing seemed good in the eyes of the king and the princess. So the king did according to the word of the angel of the Lord. And the king ordered the onyx stone and a coal of fire brought before and placed before Moses. And he placed the boy before them. And the lad endeavored to stretch out his hand to the onyx stone. But the angel of the Lord took his hand and placed it upon the coal. And the coal became extinguished in his hand. And he lifted it up and put it into his mouth and burned part of his lips and part of his tongue. And he became heavy in mouth and tongue from that point of time on. And when the king and princes saw this, they knew that Moses had not acted with wisdom in taking off the crown from the king's head. And they refrained from slaying the child Moses. And Moses remained in Pharaoh's house growing up, and the Lord was with him. That also says here that that uh, 
Moses asked for one day a week off and they would have a Sabbath so they would have the Sabbath day off that's one thing and all the children of Israel loved him all right now Moses kills the Egyptian let's hear the rest of the story and when Moses was 18 years old he desired to, to see his father and mother and he went to them in Goshen and Moses had come near Goshen and he, and he came to the place where the children of Israel were engaged in work and observed their burdens and saw an Egyptian smiting one of his Hebrew brethren and when the man was beaten uh, who was beaten saw Moses he ran to him for help for the man Moses was greatly respected in the house of Pharaoh and he said to him my Lord attend me this Egyptian came to my house last night and he bound me up and he came in and he raped my wife in my presence and when Moses heard this wicked thing his anger was kindled against an Egyptian and he turned his way, this way and that way and he saw that there was no one around and he smote the Egyptian and hid him in the sand and delivered Hebrew from the hand of that man that smote him that had raped his wife in his sight and the Hebrew went to his house and Moses returned to his house and went forth and came back to the king's house and the man had returned home he thought of repudiating his wife for it was not right in the house of Jacob for a man to come to his wife after she had been defiled and the woman went and told her brothers and the woman's brother sought to slay him and he fled to the house and escaped and on the second day Moses went forth from his brethren now this is why they're fighting in the Bible you get the rest of the story here okay these are two brothers they're, they're going out and killing this other guy because he's beat up his wife and he won't have anything to do with her because she has lain with an Egyptian and behold two men were quarreling and he said to, to the wicked one why do you smite your brother and he answered and said to him who has set thee a prince and a judge over us Dost thou think to slay me as you did that Egyptian? And Moses was afraid, and he, and he said, Surely this thing is known. And Pharaoh heard of this affair, and he ordered Moses to be slain. He put out a death warrant on him. And so God sent the angel, and he appeared unto Pharaoh in the likeness of the captain of the guard. And the angel of the Lord took the sword from the hand of the captain of the guard and took his head off with it. For the likeness of the captain of the guard was turned into the likeness of Moses. And the Lord and the angel of the Lord took hold of the right hand of Moses and brought him out forth from Egypt and placed him from before the borders of, of Egypt at a distance of 40 days journey. All right, and that's where he went to the house of Jethro. It's pretty neat reading in between the lines, isn't it? You know what's going on in the background, at least according to the book of Jasher. 2 and 11. Why he? Bayamim. Hahem. Wayikdal, Moshe, Wayitzi, Elichal, Wayar, B. Siv Lotam, Wayar, Ish, Mitzri, Make, Ish, Ivri, Micha. All right. And uh, became in the days of those that he, when he had become great and strong, Moses went out unto his brothers. And he saw the burdens of them and saw a man, an Egyptian, striking the man, the Hebrew man, of his brother. Now we know why he was striking him. He's beating him up after he raped his wife and all this stuff. 2 and 12. Why you fend? Ko, Wako, Wayar, Ki, and Ish, Wayak, Et, Ha, Mitzri, Wayit, Mo Nehu Bakol. And he turned thus and there, and he saw because not a man. And he striking the Egyptian, and he hid him in the sand. In other words, he killed him. Moses was a very big and powerful man, and he hit this Egyptian, and he killed him. 2.13. Why Yitzi? Bayom, Hashani, Wihene, Shene, Anashim, Ivrim, Nitsim, Wyomer, La Rasha, Lama, Taki, Rika. And he went out in the day the second, and behold, two men, the Hebrews, fighting. 
Now, what are they doing? They're trying to kill the guy because he wouldn't have anything to do with their sister. And he said, and he kept on saying the guilty one, why you smite and kill your fellow man? 214a. Why, Omer? Me? Samika? Lish? Sar? We? Shofet? Alinu? Hal Harekni? Ata? Amer? Ka Asher? Haragta? Et? Ha Mitzri? Wayira? Moshe? Wayomer? Get the page turn. Aken, Noda, Hadavar. And he kept on saying, Who he has placed you for a man, a prince, a ruler, and a judging one over us to kill me? You saying, Just as you have killed the Egyptian. And he kept on fearing Moses. Surely it has been known, the act or the report or the incident. 2.15. Wayishma, Pero, Et, Hadavar, Haze, Wai, Ba, Kish, Liharag, Et, Moshe, Yivra, Moshe, Mipane, Pharaoh, Wa Yehen. The Eretz, Midian, Wa Yeshev, Al Ha Beir. And he heard Pharaoh, the edict, the warrant, wanted dead or alive the this one. And he kept on seeking to kill Moses. And he fled Moses from the face of Pharaoh and he dwelled in land of Midian and he sat by a flowing well, a be'er, a flowing well. Now he goes to the land of Midian. Who is Midian? What is, who, who, is, who are the children of Midian? Brother Mike, you remember who the children of Midian are? Sharon? Abraham and Keturah. All right. These are the children of Abraham and Keturah. And what nationality, uh, uh, Sid, do you remember what nationality Keturah was? Japhethite. A Japhethite. All right. She was a Japhethite. So, uh, so Abraham had a, had a Hamite wife. His first child was from a Hamite. And he had a Shemite wife, which was Sarah, and he had a Japhethite wife, which was Keturah. Now we're all related to Abraham, aren't we? Isn't that nice? We're all related to Abraham. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. All right. 22 and verse 16 now. So this man is related to Moses, isn't he? This man. You le Kohen Midian Shiva Beno Watovana, Wat Tid Lena, Wat T Malina, Et Hari Hatim, Li Hashkot, Tson, Avahim. And to priest, look at that, we are you Le Kohen. Kohen means priest. All right, Kohen means priest. Any Jew by the name of Cohen, that means priest. Okay? And two priests, that you there, that's the that's Wa from Wa, which is Anne, and Le is a preposition. Page five one five, two fifty three is is a conjunction, and then the priest. Of Midian. He had seven daughters. Shiva the note. He had seven daughters. He had a lot of money. He had a lot of a lot of assets there, didn't he? Seven daughters. And the uh, females, they came, and they drew, and they, the females, filled the troughs to water the flocks. This, What kind of flocks is this? 
What is a stone? Sown? What's a sown? Remember what a sown is? Uh, Sharon? Sheep and goats. Sheep and goats, the little guys. The sheep and the goats. All right? Their father. Now, what is their father's name? How many names does he have? All right? He's got a lot of names. By the way, according to the book of Jasher, Jasher 67, 24 through 41, uh, we find that Jethro was a counselor to Pharaoh. He was a counselor to Pharaoh. And this man is Abraham's grandson, okay? According to Genesis 25, 1 through 4. Now here are some of his names. Uruel. Ruel means what? Ruel. That means friend of God. How about uh, Jethro? Jethro. That means preeminence. That means a high one. And how about Jether? Jether and Jethro are basically the same name. And Jeter. Jeter is the same name. Uh, preeminence. And Ru, it means friend. Jethro, preeminence again. Ragel. Ragel, Jehovah is friend. All right? These are some of his names. All right? So they're going out and filling the troughs with water. Why yo? Why yavo? Haroim. Why gar reshum? Why yagam? Moshe. Why yo wa shiyan? Why yoshik? Et sonam. And uh, the men, they came, the shepherding ones, and he drove them away. All right? And he arose, Moses, and he delivered them. He saved them. Look at that word, his name there. Look at that word right there in the root of that. And he delivered, he rescued them, he saved them. And he watered the sheep and goats and the flocks. All right? Now, now we have a we have a uh, we have a hero. He can't talk straight, but he's a hero. All right, two eighteen now, two eighteen. Why Tovanah, El Ruel, Abahen, Why Yomer, Madua, Mihar Ten, Bo, Hayom. And he uh, and women came unto Reuel. That means friend of God, their father. And uh, he said, "Why have you hurried?" And look at that word, third, second person, feminine plural, PL perfect. Why have you hurried? That's PL stem. Why have you hurried to come this day? All right. Now he's he wants to know why in the world are they back so early? What's going on here? Now, let's go over to 219 now. And I made a mistake here, too. I left out a word. Why Tomar na? Ish, Mitri, Hitse, Lanu, Miod, Haroim, Wigam, Dalo, Dala. Lanu, why Yishik et Hatson. And the females said, A man, Egyptian, he has rescued us, he has saved us from the hand of the shepherding ones, and also drawing water. He did all this for us, that's why we're back here soon. And he drew for us. And he watered the flock, the sheep and the goats. Two and twenty now. Two and twenty. Wyomer. El Binot Binota. We I go. We uh we uh go we we uh yo. All right. I'll get it right in a minute. Lama Ze Azov Ten. Et, Haish, 
Gerin, Lowell, We, Yoko, Lahem. And he said unto his daughters, And where, to what then, have ye left the man? Call him and let him eat food. Let him eat food. Lahem. See there? Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of food. House of food. 221. Why ye well, Moshe, Lashabeth, et Haish, we attend, et Tisipora, Zipporah, Beto, Le Moshe. And he uh, consented, Moses, to dwell the man, and he gave Zipporah, his daughter, to Moses. What does Zipporah mean? Zipporah. Zipporah. Remember that, Brother Lee? What what Zipporah mean? Uh, Abe, Abe, do you remember what Zipporah mean? Huh? Little bird. Little bird. I went out in the yard yesterday, in my backyard, and uh, I was shocked. I saw a little chicken walking around my backyard, a baby chicken. How in the world the thing came from? Somebody going down the road, I guess, fell out of the truck or something. A little baby chicken walking down there. A little, looks like a Rhode Island raid about this tall. Didn't even hardly have any feathers on it. So I rescued it. I moshed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, by the way, when, it, when you see, when I've written down here, it says F down there. Some of the manuscripts say for a wife at the end of it. All right. Zipporah means a little bird. A little bird. And uh, by the way, at this same period of time, at this same period of time, uh, we could go back to the book of Jasher, and I'll just give you a, a, a synopsis of this. When uh, Egypt, Jacob went down into Egypt, Jacob had a rod that had been, a staff that had been handed down from generation to generation to him. And this rod had been in the hands of Adam, they say. And it had a sapphire jewel in the top of it. And after all the upheaval happened in Egypt, Jethro got a hold of that rod after Joseph had died. And he took it with him, and he took the rod and he put it out in his garden, stuck it in the ground. And a lot of people would go by there and try to pull this staff out of the garden, and they could not do it. Now, remember the story that they have in the movies and the, and the, uh, of the, the sword and the stone where no man could pull it out? This is where it came from. It came from the book of Jasher. And it was Moses' rod or Adam's rod. Okay. Now, according to the book of Jasher, this is the rod that God held in his hand when he created the heavens and the earth and when he restored them also. This is the rod, and it has tremendous power and authority in this rod. All the people came out there and used to try to pull the rod out of Jethro's garden, but they couldn't do it. When Moses came along, he just goes, hmm, what do you know about that? And he just pulled it right out, and that was his rod. He said, well, Jethro said, that's the man that the rod belongs to right there. He is the next leader of Israel. All right. 2.22, and we're going to Quit here pretty soon. Wataled ben Wayikra et Shimo Guisham Ki Amar Ger Hagiti Be'eretz Nakariya. And uh, Zipporah now, and she bore and she kept on bearing a son, and she called him name Gershon because. He had said, a pilgrim, I have become in the land strange. All right, so that boy named Pilgrim. His name is Pilgrim. All right. And 223. Why he, by ha ha-rabim, ha-hem, wayamat, melech, mitzrayim, why ye nihu benay, Yisrael, men ha'avadah, wa'yikagu, wa'ta'al, 
Shoah Tom El Ha Elohim Men Ha Abadah. And it became in the days of many though the those that he died the king of Egypt, Melech. Alright? Two words in Hebrew, one of them is Melech and one is Moloch. What does Melech mean? King. What does Moloch mean? Angel. All right, both of them are powerful. In Mitzrayim, what does Mitzrayim, what does Egypt mean? Land of red mud and canal banks. And they groaned and they sighed in great misery, the sons of Israel, from the slaving. And they cried, and their cry, she went up, their cry, unto the God from the slaving ones. All right. 2.23. So right there is where we quit. We went from uh, 2.5 to 2.23. Do you have any questions? Do you want me to keep on referring to the book of Jasher and other historical and rabbinical writings as we we'll go along so you can fill in the signs? You like that? Brother Lee, you like that kind of stuff? Brother Abe, you like that? Yeah. They fill in all this in between. D Dakota, you like that? All right. Sharon? <laughs> Cindy and Mike and Sharon? You tell your husband that you got to bring him along so we'll have two Sharons and two Mikes. I told him. All right. Well, you <laughs> take him take him home a video so he can watch it. Maybe he'll like it. All right. All right. Well, thank you for your attention tonight. Do you have any questions, Brother Mike? You got another question? Did you get another? I'm sure I do, but I enjoyed the answer this earlier. So All right, brother, brother Lee. Do you have a question, Abe? You guys ask me questions I can't answer. I know Cindy could. Yes, Sharon. Well, I'm, when you were reading the, the incident where Moses killed. Yes. I had heard that in Moses' life, the first day he was like 40, and then he went from 40 to him, and there was a lot of 40. Yeah, there. yes. Uh, where the Bible says something, I believe it. Where the book of Jasher agrees with it, I, I agree with it. The book of Jasher said he was 18, but the Bible said he was 40. So I would say he was 40. Okay. As simple as that, because the Bible is inspired, the book of Jasher isn't. I think why it said he was 18, and they say they made mistakes in the book of Jasher, especially on times and dates. So he was probably 40 years old when this happened, because the Bible says that he was groomed in Egypt for 40 years. Okay? So that's that. thank you for bringing that up also. Where the Bible says something plainly, I'm going to believe the Bible over the book of Jasher by, by a long shot. Okay? Anything else? Brother Lee, you got a question? Dakota. Close mouth Chickasaw, huh? All right, well, let's have a prayer. And I'll turn you loose on the world, go out there. I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully I'll see you uh, uh, Wednesday night. I've got to have my eye operated on this uh, this week again. I can't remember where it's... It's the first, whatever day that is. Is that Thursday? Well, I won't have a black eye Wednesday. I'll have a black eye Sunday. All right. Who wants to come up here and dismiss us in prayer tonight? And you volunteers, no victims? Brother Abe, would you mind coming up here and dismissing this prayer, brother? He's our song leader in the morning. He always leads us in prayer at least one time. He's a very able servant of God right there. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for uh, this evening. You gave us very inspiration or You're learning the original language through the original language, and we want to know the heart uh, by the verse, and uh, we want to search out your hidden mind, uh, what we what we want to know about your heart. Just let us know your plan, your heart, your thinking, everything. 
give us the Holy Spirit and give us your wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much, brother. I appreciate you very much. I think that boy is going to be a great preacher one of these days. I think so. Well, go out and do something eternal. Thank you for your attendance tonight.